So today we have Roger Molina joining us. He's got 20 years of experience behind him, and he is one of the most highly requested Sage artists. And he was a lead educator for the Redkin Exchange for over 10 years, so this man definitely knows how to teach. And he is currently working at Lunatic Fringe Salons in Park City. He is a Sam Via ambassador, and he has an awesome visual, detailed, but also very simple style of teaching. So please, let's welcome in the chat, Roger Molina. Hey, guys. What's going on? So hey. happy to have you here. Well, I'm, I, this is me. This is my happy stash, my happy mustache. <laughs> Thank you, and good morning to you also. I'm on Mountain Time here. Also, me and... Uh, Wow, Mark, Mark Andrew are in Ogden. He's in Ogden, Utah. I'm in southern part of Salt Lake City, Utah now. That's where I'm from now. So I am very delighted to be with you guys this morning. I couldn't thank Sam Via, his team, the whole people that put things together. You guys know, have no idea how hard this team works. And it's my team now. I'm our team member now. And how long and how strong these guys put in the hours for us so that the education does not stop. And I planned a lot of stuff, so much stuff that I think too much stuff. It was called the deconstruction of shags. Um, it's based off of a class that Jesse Linares, our team member and I got to do together. It was the first time we've been together again in 10 years. It was at ABS Chicago. It was just the beginning of April and it was fantastic to be back together again. During the deconstruction of shags class, we had a lot of time to talk. And I have less. And but we were splitting. So he would show something, then I would show something, and he would show something, and I would show something. We wanted to bring this experience kind of to you guys, and of course, doing it without Jesse. But what I'm gonna do to sort of emulate his wonderful presence, which I can not do not much to emulate, but I'll try, <laughs> is to just show you this and that. And during our class, we did this and that. We showed a little this, a little that, a fringe, something styling, something else. And it's really sort of a a la carte. Sort of delivery system, if you will. Um, you know, a, a long from beginning to end haircut is fantastic, but I also am a little bit short, like spanned right now. I can't really pay attention to much. There's a lot going on, as you can tell. I'm like, mm -hmm. so I don't want to stand and talk to you all day long. I want to be able to just show you a thing, move on to the next, show you something, move on to the next. Andrew is there with us, and I'm going to go ahead and like stand up into the frame so you can watch the mannequins. Hear me, don't see me. Um, these guys are going to be prettier soon. So what we're going to do is just work right off the bat a dry one. A shag or a deconstructed shag, right, it means that you're taking elements of it and letting it stay, and you're taking elements of it and taking it away. So deconstructing, like if you had a deconstructed sandwich, it would be broke apart on the table, okay? If you had a, a deconstructed tortilla, maybe your tortilla fell apart. So you have to figure out alternate ways to do it. So in a, like a food way, and I'm really not that hungry. I eat breakfast, I promise. But in a food kind of way, we're gonna kind of jump from this kind of idea and show you a technique. And then another kind of idea to show you a technique. This is Ellen Devine's actual haircut, but she said I could use it a little bit for styling. So we're gonna deconstruct that shag a little bit and maybe I'll cut it. Maybe she won't be mad at me if I do. Ellen, if you're watching, when you type, it's okay if I can cut on your mannequin head. <laughs> and anybody else, if you feel free to like type in, write in, say anything, I'm going to promise, I promise, and I'll even go start now, paying attention to all this stuff. And please, Andrew, if there's a question that comes across that board and I do not see it, my friend, would you oblige me and jump in and come see I'll jump in. Don't you worry. I would love that. I would love that. One thing I find about Utah is you gotta work harder just to catch your breath every day, all day long. So the less I speak, the better I'll breathe up here in these high mountains. But I woke up this morning and saw the view out my window and there's snow all around again. So here we go, snow time. Okay, during our class in ABS, we did two things. I did one fringe where this remained very long. And did we have the image from the class? Is that on the deck or not, Ange? Can I call you Ange? That's a weird one to call you. I do not have that. I apologize. So in the Instagram post, there was like this long, long shag, and it was basically it had one of these face frames that stayed very Kardashian long. I realize that shags usually have short bangs, and that's where they start. But have we not been doing shags enough now to where they've evolved to be like all types? Like we used to do, no, bobs are like this. No, bobs are like this. No, bobs are like this. And now we're like, bobs are like 
everything. They can be anything. Shags are the same. So a long fringe, something that works over and over and over again consistently, it, it gets incorporated into shags. That's the kind of things we want to talk about. What I'm doing here is just taking the fringe only from the right. It may appear as though it's the left. I assure you it's the right. And I'm working just gracefully over and over and over again to remove all the hair with this Invisiblend. The Invisiblend has just a few teeth, 14 of them, I believe. And they cut, not the blade, which is varied from most things. So what I'm doing is taking a diagonal section. So it basically goes from where the head starts to round down to the corner of the eye, take it opposite of where it lives. We're going to take that hair, watch my hand like kind of come back like I'm going to grab her head, almost like I'm going to grab like a basketball, no offense. And when I come back and grab it, I'm going to flip over my hand. So now I have the hair coming down at its natural plane and slowly turning the corner and laying out ever so gracefully so I can loosen, 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 loosen. The longer I spend doing this, the softer it is. The Invisiblend is your softest, nicest, slowest way to do it. The faster I get this, more often, the more chunky it looks. I could get it in one pop if I want. But then I have pieces. You can see the texture built in. Spikes, if you will. Peaks and valleys. Where? If I stay in the realm of the Invisiblend, I never really obtain those. Let's see if I can get this at the right view. Because they diffuse baby soft. And when they diffuse baby soft, when they look down here, they also look baby soft. So you decide, and you don't really have to make a decision. Whatever work you do, let that be your guide. So if you're working and you're getting the result that you want, carry on. If you find that this is too hard or you want it to soften some, the Invisiblend got to be in your tools, be in your arsenal, or look for a, a blade that has fewer teeth but see that this blade is blunt. If this blade is blunt and these teeth are sharp, it will cut very fine. If this blade is sharp and these are blunt, it will cut differently. Not wrong or right, or there's no such thing. But just recognize the variation in your tool. Like if there's 20 different kinds of brooms, there's 20 different kinds of like rakes, 20 different kinds of hose for that reason, so that you can get different dimensions, so that you can get different effects. And that's really all we want to talk about. Who cares of the rest? Roger, Roger, could she come any closer to uh, the screen for us? I can do my dangest. Thank you. How's that? Let's try again so you can see it visually. OK, the natural flow of the fringe based off the shape of the head going to center part, directed opposite side. Keep the plane low. So it's coming out at the natural grade of the forehead. Can I say grade? Gradient. So if I was going down the hill, it would be a 6% grade. <laughs> Just kidding. That was a Utah joke. So if I go opposite of the side that it lives, flip around like the basketball, flip it over my hand, cut from the shortest point to the longest point so my body is key, meaning I can't come from underneath and cut because I would be working long to short. It doesn't work. I need to cut from short to long. This blade works open and close. I'm just using the base of the scissor only. If I fold it all the way through, it's still okay, but if I use just the base of it, meaning the first two or three teeth, if I just use those alone, I'll get the softest result every time. When I fold all the way through, it's not gonna get much, it's, not, it's gonna be okay, but it's just not quite the right way to use this one, in my personal opinion. Because I get more indifference in the shape, I'm gonna come up just slightly. When I close the, sh the blade all the way through, I lose that sort of fluid continence that goes from short to long softly. It sort of becomes more abrupt. And that's not really what this one's for. It's called Invisiblend, that Invisibrupt. I didn't plan that, but luckily it worked. So let's take it to Invisibrupt, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Just a more. This is still a dry blade, right? It's meant to cut dry hair. I don't know the name of this one yet because I just got it from Jesse. He gave it to me in Chicago. It's the 13... 650 if you're a numbers dude or dude it or dude it ramo 13650 that's what i call it but i'm a guy that likes to call things by numbers so you name it 
It's a level nine. Just kidding. It's a six and a quarter. 6.50 is six and a half. So anytime you see the numbers on the blades, let me be responsible with this. It is the classic series six and a half inch here. Classic series six and a half is a dry cutting, eh? Is that right, Andrew? Tell me. I think so because the blade sort of bows. Um, that that is a standard shear. That's not the dry cut. Okay. It, I like cutting with this one with dry. Oh yeah, My, you can definitely cut with it dry. So I don't know why I got it. Maybe it's the blade. It says Japan on it, so it's it's the one I like. Just kidding. I, I have like a bunch of these that are in the same six and a half, six and a quarter. And the one that says Japan to me is the one that I end up grabbing with this all the time. I'm like, I don't even know what it's called yet, Jess. Jess gave it to me. He's like, dude, you're going to love this. I was like, okay, I'll give it a whirl, bro. So now let's do something that's a little bit more like, it's going to be a little bit more visible, the texture between these two. If I have a longer piece here as my guide, so that's going to be the first length that I cut, this little BB here. If it's the same plane, I got to take my hand back around to the opposite side over here. So if you can't see my body, what's happening is my arm is here, but I'm coming up over the top. Get the blade parallel with the grain of the section. So if the section's going down at a 45, if you're a numbers gal, guy, person, this is my only guide. That it's at 45 degrees, that that's my initial start length, my blade's parallel to it. And as I cut, I'm going to fold all the way through. Keep the tip just being the only thing that's really cutting. You can tell there's lots and lots and lots and lots of bites. It's okay to slide. It goes from short to long. You want to slide. But the texture that I have here in my hand, come on, baby, you can see it there. That can be the texture detector, right? Whatever's left here in my hand will be what I see here on the on the shape overall. So you can tell it's going to be a little bit more, I would call it pointy, peaks and valleys, texture, if you will, compared to that opposite side. Also, cutting inside your hands, you can see, right, cutting inside my hands here and being a little bit more aggressive. I touch all that hair and just chop, 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 chop through it. It's not wrong. It's not right. It's just that you get more of a drapey, heavy sort of feel. But if you're just really about coming in and cutting it off fast, you can always come back with one of those other ones, right? And now work in the same exact opposite direction. I'm gonna take it to the opposite side. And when I do flip it over, cut from short to long still, but now I just have to switch my position. So my hand now coming back from the shortest point at the top of the section, because when you take it and flip it over, you're now at the shortest point at the top, so your hand has to whip back and come downhill. Now, does it make a really big difference which way your sisters or which way your scissors are right now in your hand if they're with the blade like being moved or the teeth being moved? I don't really know. What I would suggest is if you cut one way over on the on one side, then switch the scissor to be interacting with the section the same way, and you'll get the most consistent results. So for me, I like the teeth on the top. I don't know how people feel about it completely, but just make it be the one that you do on the left, you do on the right. And you'll end up with a very similar, if not very, very, very similar results. <laughs> one side to the other. Using different tools and now coming back and just varying it a bit. But then in Chicago, after we had created this fringe, right? We were like, okay, it feels great. I love it. But what if... It was somebody that wanted to like, just get it gone. Just wanted to cut it off immediately. Let's get at it. I want to introduce something to you that may be weird. And if I didn't quit watching anything that I do, okay? Promise. Does Russell Brand always say, stay free, you know, do what you want. Um, I'm going to grab this comb. And the reason why I'm gonna grab it is because it's got a smiley face, right? When I say smiley face, right now it's a frown, but upside down, she's smiling. And I'm gonna set all of the hair in that. This is gonna be awkward for me to get in the frame and get the camera and still see what I'm doing through my monitor, so be gracious with me. And Andrew, if I'm given the wrong angle at the wrong time, you tell me my friend, please. But I'm gonna make sure that this hair gets all centered. When this hair gets centered, in the middle of this, it'll be equal. If I have too much on the left or too much on the right, 
the smiley face will sit off balance and she'll sort of have a smirk, right? The smiley face needs to be right in the middle. If the smiley face is directly in the middle, then it'll, it'll affect the section the same. So that means the hair needs to sit right dead center of the comb. Now I'm going to take all of it at once, and I'm going to come with the teeth on top, drop down to the bridge of the nose. That you'll, you'll see the comb just sort of dip into that bridge of the nose, feel it. My pinky is also touching the head. So after I get my bridge of the nose touched with this, and maybe just slightly below, my pinky's balancing on the head shape of the head form, and I, now I can pay attention to my elevation very well, camp out in one spot. Works best if you just do one side. Seems like not much is happening. Don't get Darth controller and try to grab it and hold onto it harder. Just wait. Hugo would say, right? Darth grabber. You just need a little bit now. Don't position the comb. Don't let the position of the comb change. Don't let the position of the hair to the comb change. But if you need to pick it up, clean it up, put it back down, make sure that everything still remains equal and come back into the section you need to get still. Notice I got to move my finger out of the way because the comb in her face, so I'm doing this little daisy finger up here. I can do other things to get rid of it, but I find it better if I put it up. Because if I put it down here, I'm putting it near her eye and it makes her feel weird. And I don't want to do that in such a vulnerable time, right? All at once, you have a fast, fast, fast fringe. The smiley face of the comb creates an over-direction. It creates a little bit of a bow here. So this comes in the barbering kit. It's the 30023. I told you I'm a number guy. But it's the barbering one, the one with the handle. It comes in a kit, a little flat fold kit with the other cool brushes that you'd like if you're a barber. And this ain't even obviously a barber move, so it doesn't take a barber to like it. But... If you want to just get a quick bang and fringe, that's the way to go. In a lot of those shagging worlds these days, there's a little bit more of a natural texture is the thing, right? Uh, not such a strength. But if you need to get a blunt line, daisy finger. <laughs> Sorry, Josh, that was a funny one though, right? I'm like looking at my beard right now. I'm like, dude, my beard is so wiry. Hold on, let me work that out. I'm going to grab this stuff because I've been waiting to put it on. Um, since I tried my other stuff. So I'm putting on a few pumps of it. Look at that, a little, little drops, maybe four. Three, that was three, I think. This is becoming something that I love very much. Um, I do gotta give a shout out to the Colton King guys. I'm like, dude, I gotta get me. Hold on, let me get me. Real professional, Andrew, check me out. I'm just gonna fix up my beard here real quick. It's distracting me. All I can see in the picture is my beard. It means I probably got stuff down here. No, just kidding. Okay, hit it with a little, ooh, a little bit of style, and then I'm ready to go. Yeah, it smells better. I'm all squirrel. <laughs> Big shout out to the Colton King crew. I don't know if anybody's watching out there. Um, Jared, Jared Briggs, I now work with him up in Park City at the Lunatic Fringe, and have just become enamored with how these guys do stuff. They Really, really, really care about it. And I'll talk more about this stuff, but let's keep let's keep going with this fringe thing. Okay, so here's like a separate trick that you can use that's also connected to what we had just did. So if you take the fringe and you lift it up from where it lives, right? You can drop just enough to where you can see the weight and know that that's good. What I mean is, if you were cutting a perimeter, you would cut the strength of the perimeter, right? And then you would see how far up you can layer before you start to lose the perimeter strength and so you have to stop. There. So I just want to grab a little bit of very, very small little angel dust of hair from this inside. Let me drop it down. I'm going to take just a little baby angel dust off the top, maybe a vertical slice that's paper thin, and keep dropping down until I have a sophisticated fringe or sufficient fringe. And then from there, the hair that's above it is going to be my trick. So I was like thinking just recently if I could just slightly remove some of this weight on someone's bang, but not all the way through. Like what happened was, what had happened was the top got really short and the fringe down here got really long. But if I cut any more, I was going to end up with holding that. Right? I didn't, and I was like, Ooh, I, I think I got a little crazy. So what I need is a recipe to fix. Like I got the fringe too light, too, too fast. I need to like a way to measure it. 
So if I have the length still remaining down here, I can see the bluntness, then cut inside my fingers with a little paper thin piece. I am barely closing. Again, just using the base of this scissor, cutting inside of my hand. But when I get to that top stuff, I'm gonna leave one long piece. So right coming from the highest point of the fringe area, this piece remains. And it still makes it all the way down to the perimeter of the fringe. So if I just work, and little vertical slices, now going away from profile or center section, but now working out to the outside. If I over direct to the middle, I maintain the length. If I follow and turn it, then I end up getting shorter bits on the outside. What do you want? I don't know. I use the smiley face of the cone to over direct to the center. Right, and so I maintain length on the outside. So I'm also gonna over direct some to the middle. Let me give you a different perspective. As I'm working my way toward the outside, I am gonna take vertical slices that move toward the outside, but I'm gonna move them toward the middle. And when I move them toward the middle, they'll maintain more length towards the outside. So simply put, now that I have my over direction to the center, the actual technique and the strength of it is with the tool. I'm only gonna close one, two or three teeth at a time. And I push down, so I'm like teasing if you will. And then I'm gonna leave that last bit that's long towards the top, long. So then that way I have scattered bits of texture inside. And the more I do, the more I see, right? So right now it's just a light little loose little move that's going towards this outside corner, it breaks up, I can kind of see through now. If I wanna get more aggressive, I can't. It's easy to get more aggressive. It's, it's harder to get soft. Is that right, right? Hairdressers out there, no. It's easy to get blunt textured, ripped up lines, but try to get something that's blunt textured soft. Now you're working with fire, right? No no, no, no dig on the textured people because now I'm gonna show you how to make it really loud. Obviously, I, I agree with everything. I think everything should be done. I think that all things should be done so that you understand them all completely. So here we go again. I'm now going to start working toward this opposite side, the right side, and do it with a more bold, a more like biting scissor. This is my reversible blending share. Now I'm talking about 40 teeth, 42 teeth versus 14, so three times the amount, right? I'm coming now from the inside, and I'm still gonna do the same thing, just cut with the first few teeth. But each time I take it with this, leave the length at the top, top of it, don't cut the last bit at the highest point of the fringe. But each time, well, look how much hair went that time. I caught it. That's twice the amount that came from the original section. In fact, I'd say it's three times the amount because it's three times the teeth. So if I have 42 teeth taking tiny little bites, I'm going to have more hair than 14 teeth that are a little bit bigger taking bites. Because as you know, if you've ever sat and had dinner with the 42 tooth person, they eat fast. How many teeth does a human have? Does anybody know? Hit me with the good stuff. How many teeth does a human have on average? Like a normal, does everybody have the same amount? Can we talk about this stuff on TV? Is anybody there? Just kidding. Well, get over there, girl. So I feel like we're doing pretty good with this technique. I feel like we can move on. Now let's talk about something else. So we got two different textures, two different scissors, working on two different sides. One gets a little bit more airy light, and the other one's gonna get a little bit more like, I would say provocative, right? A provocative texture comes with more teeth and more impact. So whenever I'm working any length, pretty much any length of shag now, which is where we're gonna move into, I'm gonna show you this section of this. Any length shag, I'm gonna work with some sort of diagonal, if I can, separation from top to bottom, meaning, when it works from front to back, it doesn't just come straight across, it sort of dips down. And that dip gives me a weight that's similar because I get more as I get toward the back. So if I cut a straight line across here, I'm gonna end up with some sort of variation between weights, top to bottom. If I go from front to back and stay in a little bit of a diagonal, I will have the same amount or similar amounts on the top of the head as I will on the bottom in weight. Just if I grab the ponytail and see, 
I'll see that there's an equal amount of hair on the top and bottom. It's not something that I'm necessarily claiming, you know, that you have to do. I'm saying that if you do that, you may find yourself in less trying to blend out to disconnected shapes than if you did. So I'm going to take a zigzag disconnection from top to bottom. I'm going to work first underneath because I want to work with this front stuff as though. So just for just for explanation's sake, I'm going to back out here and then we cut, I'll come in tighter, hopefully. But what I'm going to work with first is length. So this is the type of person that wants that to be tangible, noticeable, provable. This is how long it is, and it stayed that long. So it's, I'm going to address the length first on this person. It's dry, so nothing will change. So whatever I do here, I'll say that length will stay. So let's make them feel like it's long first. It's that kind of person. In the shag world, there's ones that want this stuff down, and then they're like, oh, cut all that. I don't even care if they're this. Hold on to it. This is that person. So what I'm going to do is take just a like a long blade, I want a long blade. I'm going to take the entire left side. I'm going to direct that all up and back to here. I want it to throw forward, so I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to turn this to parallel to you so you can see the grain. And then there's probably a good chance that this is going to be too high out of the frame. So I'm going to take it up and I'm going to trap it there and then I'm going to bring it back to you so that you can see it. So when I take it vertically up here, just straight up, right? If it was the wall behind her, literally right, right up the wall. And my hand is flat with that as well. So and there's got to be a way I can do it longer. Let's get back further. My frame, I got to move stuff. So what I'm doing is coming straight up, parallel, flat. My hand is flat with the wall, and then I pinch the hair about there. So this is how much is coming over. I'm gonna have to get closer, maybe to make this work, let's see, yeah. So I slid straight up to the wall, trapped it, bink, right? And then I'm gonna lay it down forward, and I'm gonna smash from the back of it where I'm standing, and I'm gonna leave points. So it's like, if I were to go diagonal, it looks like stairs, right? It's got, it's got peaks and valleys going up there. I'm not gonna deep point cut too much here if the hair's fine. If the hair is very thick, it's okay to come back and get deeper. When the hair's fine though, leave it alone because recognize this is your perimeter. Just leave the stair steps and walk away. But if I put a lot of depth here, right, it'll loosen it up as it falls into its natural. If I keep it blunter here, I'll have the strengthest. So if it's fine, cut it blunt. If it's medium, cut it like in lightness like this. But if it's really thick, you can get like deep stairs, dive down deep. Add more when they have more, but do less when they have less. Keep it simple. And then drop it all down and we'll go together. The length still remains, but now it floats instead of falls. On this right side, the uncut side, it falls, right? Good for that one where you're like, ooh, look at the dibby 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 dibby, which is actually really shiny. I'm back in that stuff. This style by Colton King, same when I put in my beard, that's what's in there. Um, this like float soft sort of distillation of weight, is that a word we can say? How it sort of disappears and floats away, it comes with maximum elevation, right? So when you employ maximum elevation. Let me just take this right side and show you at another angle or hopefully we get it more concise. I'm going to take the whole right side straight vertical. Pretend there's a wall behind her. Then you grab a little bit of hair from the previous. Now let me come closer. Boop. The inside corner on here will be my length that I have that I just cut. Stay parallel with her, flats back to the wall. And now that's the inside length and all the stuff I need to cut. So if I point cut like the stairs, remember that's for like the hair that you want to be thick. The thick like weighted staircase here will mean that it's got a lot of perimeter weight down here. If I grab it, pull it up again, leave more space between my fingers so that a deep blade can get in. Stay parallel to the grain of the hair. Don't turn, but stay parallel and cut deep, deep channels now, let me tell you this. If I'm hitting the blade from the back here, it makes a difference. It makes it open up an air out more. 
If I put it to where the blade's hitting from the top here, it's more of a chase down scenario. Is it always true? No, you could wiggle your hand this way and change it. You could turn it this way and change it. All the truths can be revealed with just the slightest little twist of a hand. But if you take it straight up and stay parallel with it and get a little from this side and then did it again to where you hit it a little from this side, if it was an ax, you would notice it. This is not an ax, right? It's a little very buttery, golden, like narrow pointed scissor. So I get a softer result to it. But if I wanted to come in and get like a little bit more aggressive and take out bigger chunks, think of what an ax would, boom, tell me that wouldn't affect the way it flows. It's truly, you can't. So if you cut, cut, cut big chunks, psh, you're going to see these sort of loud, aggressive chunks down in the silhouette low. Even though it was taking the maximum elevation from where it lived, I still will have more shatter in the silhouette, in the perimeter, all of it will reveal because of the shatter taken at the high elevation. Tell me, my friend, what's up? We had a couple of questions on the zigzag sectioning. Um, Rosie is wondering, if, like, I, I think the question that Rosie is asking is, what's the purpose of the zigzag section? And then uh, as kind of part of that question, Rola um, from YouTube asked, how do you get it um, equal side to side? OK, great. Thanks, guys. Those, those are great answers. Great questions. I think I have a good answer. Let's see. So the, the key to a zigzag part when it's in cutting is don't overthink it. I am taking a zigzag parting because then I won't have one straight seam. If I had one straight seam to try to disconnect from each other, I would end up with a shelfiness or like a heaviness on a bow or something that doesn't match. If I take this zigzag parting, which I did, and the, the way they do it is just stand behind and find the parietal ridge, if that's a word we can say, or wherever you're like separate from side to top, right? Wherever you think the top, side and top separate, this is the, the version that you're doing. You can measure stuff out if you want to get weird, put a comb against the side of the head, where it leaves the head, all those sort of tricks. That's, that's the round of the head. So it would be around here-ish. What I'd say is if the hair's thick, you can go deep. If the hair is thin, stay up. Right? And then finding out whether we got a medium hair here, so I'm going right at the recipe. This is why I showed you this like width of hair, because it's a medium bulk, medium density, and I'm going to go to the point of where I almost always go, which is right at that parietal ridge, the round of the head, where it goes from flat and starts to round. That's the point and zigzag through. So you're getting a little bit from each side of that point. When you direct it into your hand, like you're making a ponytail on the top and you just go ticket, 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 put it in your hand, go to the opposite side. You're looking at points of reference in the mirror. So when I'm deciding how high or low I go on the right, I went here, right? So on the left, I just start around that same perspective. And even if I get a little bit lower or a little bit higher or something else, it's, it's okay. It's just going to make sure that the zigzags are working back and forth across the same plane as they meet to the middle. So if I go low here, high here, low here, high here, that's okay. Just wiggle the same amount of wiggle, and then you'll end up with something that sits balanced together. So that's the hole underneath. So if I wanted to really protect this person's feelings and they were scared about the, this hair getting cut, I can take and trap that hair, put it in a ponytail. I can put a clip on it. Anything to, to keep them feeling safe, I'd say take that measure. If it's a person that told you, please don't cut this stuff off, or this is very important to me, I, and you know that if you touch that hair, you're going to be in trouble, just put it out of the way so that they feel better. If you're like a good hair cutter and you've been paying attention a long time, you may not need it in that to keep it safe, but you're doing it for her at this point, so it's okay to just leave it. So let's just leave it like, like she... They did say that for now. Okay, and now we're gonna take the hip stuff that comes down over the top that we're gonna to cut off. Shacks have so many different levels, so many different dimensions, so many different possibilities. You can cut them forward and you can cut them up and you can cut them back and you can cut them long, you can cut them short and they can have that, my friend. I might have a fight on my hands, but I would call that a shag. If you were in the like late 60s, early 70s, all the way through, even into the 80s, shags were like lengths like this as well. And they have sort of this 
all, all the everything gets brought straight up back in the day and then it started coming forward and then it started coming like diagonal up and back you can get lost in the chase but the reality is that a shag can be like any dimension any length it's the elevation and sort of the extremity extremity not like a finger but extremity of the shape because it's it's short and it's bold it's loud that's what people like about it a bob is its own statement because you're willing to cut your hair off and you've got like mm, wibble, right? But if you cut this length off on the top, it's the same thing. It's that same sort of power statement or whatever you want to say. It's, it's a unfear. Unfear. And that's what we want to exhibit in this case, in this scenario. So cutting that fringe off strong and bold is key to this like level of unfair, but the length that they want to maintain, that's pres preserved. All this stuff in the middle, let's do it all in like a quick shot. I'm just gonna get weird. Take the whole left side and the whole right side and cut them off relatively quickly. I'm taking literally everything from in front of the ear that's above my zigzag. Zigzag's and a pony on the bottom. I'm not gonna get it. And I'm gonna direct it opposite where it lives. This has come straight forward here so you can see all of it at one time, that whole big section in my hand. Yeah. Take a little bit of the fringe from the center and look at how loud and like bold that is. And I'm just going to hold it in my hand and I'm going to cut toward myself just like I did on the fringe in the first place. Just keep working it. I'm gathering hair that I've cut, but you could see it's all still got soft edges. Everything that's in my hand, which don't let that much stay in your hand, has a soft edge. If I ever see like a hard one in there, that means I went too fast or too strong or too long. So I'm literally holding the fringe dead center. My finger underneath is balancing on their forehead to hold it steady. And I have everything from the right side of my hand and I literally just gonna keep on Keep it on over and over and over and over and over. You might say, well, that seems like it takes forever, Raj. I mean, truly, if I had a bunch of sections, it would. If I had just one section, how long did that really take? Just keep working. The air is getting thinner between the sections. It's almost disappearing. Each time I work toward me, Work toward me. I work toward me. I'm getting to that last bit where I have just a few hairs, so camp in one spot to get rid of those. Keep coming. Slide out. Diagonal finger angle. In relationship to the section that I have in my hand, it's coming straight out off, and it's building almost like a V on this bang, if you will. Easy to remember, like via. Now the last little few pieces, camp and get and then I have literally a fringe that extends very far back to the top of the ear almost, right? So I have all this short lengths inside and front. Is there a couple pieces that I could like fiddle over? There's one, I see that little hair. I could fuss it if I wanted to. But if it's just one, it's not gonna impact anything. Cut it off, it's fine. But I have almost like a reverse line that builds like the one that comes underneath. The underneath throws forward, this one throws backwards, so they're gonna dance together well. So you can take it to the opposite side. I'm gonna get more aggressive on the opposite side because we should. And I'm gonna take it all forward and I'm gonna point cut it so it'll be loud. So on the right side, soft, invisiblend. And then on this left side, we're gonna take it the opposite just like we did. I'm gonna make sure I have only the hair I want. So I'm going from the highest point of the head and dropping down to the top of the ear, maybe slightly even in front of that, depending on how thick the hair is front to back. You know what I mean? When they have a very full front and a very light back, or sometimes it's the opposite. I feel like the majority of the time, blonded and kind of damaged hair has a lighter front. So doing a lot, a lot, a lot of light, 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 maybe, maybe it's not right. Maybe you need it thicker, bolder. Maybe your hair is finer. Realize this is a brave, brave move for them. So I have the hair pinned down low, right? Let's slide slightly this way. 
So now, I think I had a better angle before. There we go. I have the center length as my guide. I have all the hair from above the round of the head or the parietal ridge or whatever you want to call it. The stuff that lives on top is separated from the stuff that lives on bottom. This is a lot of hair at once, right? So I have to really make sure I spread it out and get it. I could even leave it in the comb if I wanted, if it's easier. I just need to chase from the inside to the out, point cutting. Think about it like an ax. Ax hits from the top and then it lays down. If I flip the ax underneath, it whips out. Doesn't matter which one you do, just know that it will change it. If I maybe stay with the ax on top or the blade on top in the beginning, and then I start switching halfway through, will it change it? Let's find out. See if we got proof in the pudding, eh? Notice I'm only cutting from one side. So if I'm cutting from the inside to the out, it will steadily get longer and longer and longer. Notice my left hand is slipping down and letting the hair slide further and further and further and further and further and further into the comb. Right now, she's only got one focus in this entire world. What is it? The blade, the scissors, those lengths, that's all. And that's the importance, right? The value of a haircut is creating little tiny moments where they're literally stuck, entirely engaged into what's happening at that minute. There's nothing else in the world. And then you move on, right? And so you see, you get much more of like, a, uh, an, an ex the texture is louder. I got a single blade making multiple cuts, right? Before we had 14 little tiny blades making multiple cuts. So you're gonna have a thousand little perfs with this, while you're gonna have a hundred with this. Now the difference is that you get a straight shot, like point of view when you have a straight blade, the narrower the tip, the narrower the blade, the finer the piece of machinery is, the finer the texture will be. The bigger and bolder and louder the blade, the bigger and louder and bolder the texture. So if I switch blade sizes, I switch texture sizes. So it's important to have all kinds of blades where you've got different like depths and weights and some are thick and some are thin and some are aggressive and some are soft because you never know what you get, right? And each person will even change sometimes what they want next time, last time, next time is like different, always, usually should be. Um, Paul Mitchell always taught me to make a small shift though. If you did it just like this last time, do it just like this again, but shift it about 10%. So maybe you just changed the fringe, or you just changed the silhouette, or maybe now we're ready to take the clip out of that length and cut some of that off. Maybe that's the big shift later, who knows? But if you have all the looseness around this outside, you can see they're not twins, they're sisters, right? I got one blade on one side, one blade on the other, that's all okay. right. On a human, you may wanna match them together, but on this, I want you to be able to see the difference. Texture, point cut with a blade, and then invisible and soft with a much more like short approach. On the, on the left side, we shifted our comb and started to drag toward the length so it remained down here. On this right side, I did not. I just camped in one spot, I held it exactly and I cut from short to long and we end up with a much like longer bit on one side and shorter on the other. I think I did that in reverse. This is the long side. Here's our shortness over here. Now it's just that top cap, right? Now we have the stuff that's living towards the top and the back. So all this hair back here has not been cut at all. I'm going to take the entire left side. Yes, the entire left side, all the way up to where I've cut already, and everything above my pony is going to get cut at one time. I'm going to use extreme elevation this time. I can come all the way up and over the other side. So now I'm taking the hair from the back all the way to the front and even opposite where it lives. So if it lives on the right, I'm taking it to the left. All of it, comb from underneath. Notice I got a wide tooth comb at first, because if there's a lot of hair, it's, this hair has been prepped and smoothed. But if she came in kind of raw dry, maybe use the wider teeth at first just to get the comb through it. And then I'm actually gonna take a center, cent center section again of this length overall, see where it is. That's my length from the fringe, boom, right? Take it up to the center, but it sort of over directs to that outside. I don't want a guide guide, I just want a visual reference. Keep combing from the bottom so you don't lose all the hair. I have this little bit of guide coming from the fringe. I'm going to drag it opposite where it lives over here. And let's go, let's go, maybe, maybe, it's my Bob Ross impression. I'm just going to go regular blade, right? So this is that 650 classic. 
I'm going to go opposite where it lives and drag it, lay it down over the head. So the hairs have the most maximum elevation that it can possibly have in the land. Comes from the back crown area and it wraps all the way up over the top and even down to the front. This is important, right? Down. So it's if it was the hair from underneath, it would that stuff went all the way up. This one's coming all the way down. Look at the guideline underneath, and there's some length that's happening from the frames that I carried all the way down. Daisy finger again. There we go. Spread this stuff out well, as wide as you can get it. And then I'm going to put the axe on the bottom. So that means the blade's coming from underneath. And I'm going to point cut heavy. When I say point cut heavy, I mean it took me five times to get rid of almost all the hair. Five closes. Before, I did a lot, a lot, a lot of soft touches. This time, I'm going more bold, bigger, louder. And the reason being is I have it at the maximum width that it can possibly get. And I also have it wrapping around their natural head form. So when I let it go, it has to travel so far that by the time it gets back there, it almost just disappears into nothing. Right? There's like this soft, airy flow about it that disappears in the wind texture because it traveled so, 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 so far to get cut. Well, what if it didn't travel so far? What if you took a piece the exact opposite side? So instead of the left side, we're now on the right side. I'm going to take all of that here. Let me get a better view. Getting used to my new studio here in Utah. It's definitely different than the one that I'm used to. I'm used to being in such a small house, but now I have this whole big room, and it seems like I'm like a million miles away still. Um, now I have this just the right side. You can see the zigzag. It's a little sloppy. Good. Let it be. Don't like get a perfect zigzag or it's not going to do what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be like a zipper that's been broken, busted, put back together a couple times. So it's got some variation in it. Take an opposite of where it lives. And as I drag it opposite where it lives, I'm going to comb from the bottom side so that all the hair can lay in the comb. Wider teeth are you know, the ideal to start, maybe once you have it pulled out, you could switch to the fine teeth side, right? You got all the like knots or tingles pulled out, then you can switch to the finer teeth if you want to. And in fact, if for this section, I'm just going to leave it in my hands or leave it out of my hands. I'm going to leave it in this comb because when I grab with my hands, I tend to grip harder and I pull it into place. I don't necessarily want to do that. I want this to lay down and wrap around the head and spill over. And then I'm going to see the length that I want here is literally going to match the fringe. And I'm just going to boom. This time, I'm going to take more time. When I take more time and I take smaller, 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 smaller bites, I end up with lots of little pieces falling off that are like very light, loose, small. Wait, where are you? Maybe you come here. I can do it. There it is. So you can see compared to those last bites, these are very, very fine in nature compared to them. On the other side, if you lose it, just come from underneath, grab again, slide down, find your guide, cut from there. Make sure you don't grab your fringe. It's slightly held up off the bevel of the head. So there's about an inch and a half or two in between here, so I'm not accidentally getting my fringe again. I'm just now cutting inside of my hand, staying parallel to the grain of the hair. So if the hair is coming into it at 21 degrees, my blade's at 21 degrees. Just kidding. That was always it was supposed to be funny, but it wasn't. Just match them. You can take a really long time here. Remember, you're cutting the whole thing in one section. As this, at this point, we're on like five sections. So we could be good by taking our time here. Don't go too fast and make like something you didn't want happen to happen. And I'm going, 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 slowly, slowly, slowly. Staying parallel to the grain of the hair. By nature, I'm like, just cut that way. Oh, right? Now you have to come back and really spend a lot of time fixing that. When the hair's long and strong, it stays out of the way because it hang, it's hanging and gravity is pulling it down. So if I stay parallel to the hair and cut slowly, I will end up with less mistakes than if I'm like, just get out of here and just cut a straight line because now I'm going to have ledges and hard lines and chops that I have to go and remove. And when I do, I'll still end up with little tufts of hair, whereas if I just stayed with the camp and went slow and go tip, 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 tip only, stay parallel exactly to the grain of the hair, I'll end up with a soft, like baby fine soft. 
I can go deeper too, as long as I'm completely parallel. Just depends on the width. If it's very thick, go deep. If it's not, don't. So now we have our external. Everything is built on this outside. It's soft as it gets. It leans back hard. It sits right on her perfect spot. So if I have a, like a, a cheekbone that's like banging and I want to emphasize it, I'm going to put it just above that cheekbone and let that be my like, mm, the line. If I want to bring attention to that, or maybe the eyes in here are getting lost under the hair, but you want them to stand out, lighten them. So if you put blonde anywhere where you want to focus, it becomes like an amplify button. Bang, focus here. This is the thing. And when you're doing that, when you're making those decisions, definitely let them know that that's why you're doing it. If you find somebody with a jawline, a chin, a anything that stands out, a beautiful eye, you tell them that they have that. And you'll be amazed at how much they can own it. And that becomes something very important. I don't know the exact science of why, but people like to be told what it is that they have that's good, eh? So now we have the distach. Distach? That, that's a good word. So we completely separated. There's nothing really relating to these two at all. Because that energy from the front, that length that we chose, completely detached from the back by the time you take it all the way forward. You just know how long to cut it because of the fringe. But there's, I mean, is it a guide? Can you say that? I don't know. It's a, definitely a, gonna hone you in on the exact length if you pay attention to the exact length. But if you, they don't match anywhere but here, and there ain't no way in the world where hair is gonna live up here forever, it lives back here. So they're connected, but separately. And they end up having a, a kind of contrary movement to one another. You can see the bottom underneath wants to lay flat while the top wants to whip and go back. Why, right? We have a, such a, everything in a, this extreme over direction, over elevation, if you will, that we're ending up with this sort of like perverted, like external layer. It's You can see it sitting in that diagonal back, but it's dis, dis, disconnected. But you can every once in a while catch that there's there's a variation in here somewhere, right? So maybe I need to come back and just slightly adjust. Don't take the disconnection away. You want them to act like chaotic together. They, they're symbiotic, but they're going to be chaotic because one's so much shorter than the other. But this is sort of an interpretation of this octopus level. If you're talking about the octopus haircut or the octafont, as Jesse was calling it, you can get that sort of disconnection with zigzag parting. They're really going to help. Um, but let's try this. I'm just going to go back. This is like Utah time and everything's getting just slightly dry. I'm just going to add a tiniest touch of tonic to it. And I don't want to like at this point change its mind. It's been flat ironed. It's been like ag addressed. And some of what I'm seeing may actually just be because I cut hair after I styled it. You ever notice that when you cut hair after you style it, you're like, oh, I didn't really have a perfect like setup. So I'm gonna add a little tonic and spray it back into it and just let it dry on its own for a second. The tonic is sick, it's good for you, it's organic. You can put it all over yourself and it's gonna actually help your skin. This is the world I'm trying to live in. So Colton King has got that by the neck. The things that they're making, I really gotta add it to those guys. And thanks for sending it to me, boy. Jared is the man. Up there in Park City, I've been able to work next to him and kind of pick his brain this week. And I'm telling you truly, like, the dude's going to change a lot of things. So, I wanted to be part of it. Thanks for the support, my friend. Check out the tonic, too. Like, tonic, you can literally put everywhere on yourself. Just accidentally got it on her a little bit. But this is the one I would not feel bad about that at all. Like, if every ingredient that's on it is natural, good, it smells like it. So if I'm fixing up a, a, a shag and just kind of adding that last little bit, don't cry, girl, you good. Um, adding a little bit more texture is possible. You can add it with a, a cream. You can add it with a balm. I'm gonna just try and play with this one a little bit just to see what it's like to get some more texture. This is the balm. It comes out very like kind of looks pomadey, looks sculpty, clayish, like kind of light. Um, a lot of the people that do pick up in Park City where I work now use this as a color barrier cream because it's natural. What I'd say is anytime you have something that's got a little bit more like viscosity to it, 
just kind of start with the tips of your fingers. Don't come in hard and like with anything. I don't care what it is. Just start with the tips of your fingers and work inside out. Andrew, what's up, my friend? Um, we have a question from Bernadette. She's asking, uh, can you do this dry cut on curly hair? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I have a short version right behind me. And Bernadette, thank you for asking. I just looked at the time and realized I've been enjoying myself so much that I'm almost out of it. Um, a couple minutes away only. Here's a couple of examples of curly Bernadette. This is a short example, but it's almost the same perspective. Right? The fringe on the front becomes a short disconnect. A lot of the side lengths come up to it. This is a very, very short example. What I'd say is when you're working on textures like this that are curly is you want to keep those steps, the stairs. Frizzy ends need friends. So the more you away, the more like kind of it's going to raise. Where if you stay blunt with it and when you're, when you're cutting these lines and directing the hair up from the side to the front, when you take bites, you're going to get more diagonal to the section and take like little bites to where those little clumps stay together. You want them to build a little pack of homies and then stay in it so you can stay together. The more I like shred, shred, shred this up, the more it's just going to like, right? So if I want them to play together, have them stay together, and then they'll, they'll marry well. I don't want to really get in there and start shredding a lot of stuff with curly hair because it just sort of wilds out. But thank you for that question. That's awesome. And that brings it to this and this sort of mentality, which is in the, you know, let them stay together. Don't shred them all. It works better. Um, and last, I think definitely just taking little bits and little textures with irons. Here's the thing. The last thing that I want to say, and this is it. And when you're talking about these sort of shapes and these sort of realms, um, as a curly haired person, I always just came in, got my hair wet again, and then started over. But with product these days, the tonic, you could use jelly if you want. Here's my like thing. If tonic is like the solution that breaks things down, it's like the water, right? And then you can add things to them to sort of switch them up. Like jelly has a little bit, a tiny bit of hold. So I take it and I kind of submerge it into it and liquefy them, emulsify them all together. And then I have like a tonic jelly. Any product in the world that you have, if they play well together, marry well together, right? Try mixing them together and see what sort of results you get. If you can only paint with 10 colors, it gets boring. But if you have 10 colors, you can make an infinite amount of combinations of colors. The same is true with product. So taking these days, right, a diffuser, instead of trying to blow it out straight, pick it up and let it work into it. I'm going to turn it off. It's too loud. But here and there. I'll just give it some heat, hold it in that spot. You can leave the heat on, of course. I'm just talking, so it's going to be too loud. But the more you push up and the more you mess up that hair, the more it activates with the teeth or the fingers. The fingers of this diffuser are raising up and pushing up underneath, and then I let it dry there. And then I want to raise and push forward and let it dry there. So no matter which way I'm working, bobs, or not the bobs, the shags tend to kind of push towards this middle now. Everything's getting pushed toward the middle. So I'm going to come up and lift into that space. Even from the back, I'm going to come up and lift into that space when I diffuse. And it creates this sort of what I call a schmutz, a forward waiter movement. And I think that's like the 2022, 20, 23 sort of movement that we'll see a lot of. And whether it's long lengths that compete with that flow, one that goes back and then one that goes forward, you end up with short lengths that pull to the side a lot and kind of like rouge out here in Salt Lake and up in Park City, this sort of like side flare here has become huge. So if you're getting even wider, like as you go down, that's all right. But these different elements and like how to get them vary, varying, varying degrees of the same thing and just varying subtle differences between tool choice, product choice. You know, Sam has got a thousand different things that you could alter what you do completely just by investing in one or two, because like we said, the combinations get greater when the ingredients that you're combining become greater. So more tools, more fun really is bottom line. <laughs> the more stuff you got, the more stuff you can do. And if you're That's like, right. I love having them because it makes me do things that I don't know how to yet. And that I think is the secret. Awesome. Well, thank you, Roger. All those bits and pieces. It, 
it's so cool how you can take so many different approaches and smash them together and get different results from it. And you offered us lots of different tools to incorporate, not just into shags, but into any haircut. Yeah, and I definitely go check out, if you're wondering which one to check out, Sammy's got the BOGO 5.0. That's uh, what, buy one, get one half off. Is it going through May, you said? How long does it run? Yeah, end of May. So we've got buy one, get one 50% off through the end of May. That's at samvia.com. Yeah, definitely go and check it out, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Colton King. Thanks so much, Andrew. Um, Sam Via, if you're watching this, if you've seen this, right now, we love you very much. Thank you for taking care of everybody out there and taking care of us. And definitely go and support Sam Via and look through all the videos. He's been smashing it for years. And it's an honor to be with him and with the team. And uh, I'm, I'm really grateful that you guys stayed and watched for so long. I'm sorry it took a little longer than we thought, but I hope it was worth the wait. And I can't wait to see you guys again. Awesome. Thank you so much, Roger. Thank you, guys.